Bradley, what are you doing here on my screen? Hey, Dan, remember a couple of weeks ago, I did a video on data pipelines in Microsoft Fabric and Copilot, and I got data from my managed instance. Well, in there, there was a virtualized table. And I told people, you and me would do a video about that. I'm glad you reminded me of that. I'm getting old. So we're going to do data virtualization within our managed instance? Today on Tales from the Field. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Yeah. Set your affirmations. Aspirations. We've all made New Year's resolutions. Let's make one more together. Let's learn and grow together. It, we've got so much wonderful stuff planned for this year on Tales from the Field. If this is your first time finding us on Tales from the Field, give us a like and hit that subscribe. We drop content every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Monday, we drop something we like to call MS Tech Bits. We also drop those on Wednesdays. On Tuesdays, Brad, what do we drop? Our Azure Data Community Roundtable, where we feature content from the creators in the Azure Data Community for the data community. And then monthly, we do what, Brad? Oh, we've got a fabric roundup that we do with the product group, and we have so much great stuff planned for the end of this month. Now let's get over to that great content. So Dan, I'm going to start off by looking at our documentation, Data Virtualization with Azure SQL Manage Instance. This is a great document. And what we want to do is we want to go down here and look at this. Now, we've covered in the past why you want to use a managed identity, but I'm actually going to use the shared access signature. Now, the reason for that is I've already got my Azure Data Lake Gen 2 in place, and I have a lot of contents within this specifically, and I didn't add an AD group where I could just add my managed identity into that AD group so it propagates down. So I would need to add this to all of my sub items and subfolders. So using the sub shared access signature allows me to skip that and just be able to use this. So here I am in my Azure Storage Explorer, and this is my Bball wow. ADLS Gen 2 account. And in here, I actually have a Bball ADLS. ADLS Gen 2 container. And I also have a folder for baseball. In baseball, I have stats. And in stats, you can see I have many, many pages of all of these different files. And what this is, is the play-by-play -play activity by every game in Major League Baseball um, and every event in every single game from 2022 up until the modern age. The format of this is in a CSV, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to preview. And you can see this is all text delimited data. That was a lot of data. That's a lot of baseball data. Yep. I, I was going to say this is a little over 12 million rows worth of data when we add all this together. Um, and it's actually kind of condensed. We could explode this out and it could actually be much larger than this. So I'm over Excellent. here in my SQL Server Management Studio, and there's a couple things that I need to do first. So I'm in my database, Baseball Analytics. And the first thing I have to do is create a master key encryption uh, by password. Now, I've already created my master key, uh, but had I not created this in the master database, it would give me an error, or it would just run successfully. In this case, it's going to give me an error. There's already a master key in the database. So I could drop and recreate, but I'm not going to do that because once you create a master key, you just want it to be in place. So if anybody wonders what a master key is for, the master key specifically is in the event that two certificates encrypting data would have a tie, the encryption key and the password and the master key, um, it is also, it encrypts the certificate by the master key uh, would be the tiebreaker for those certificates to make sure that there is a difference between the two. So. First up, I've got to create a database scope credential because I'm in my managed instance, but my data exists in my Azure Data Lake Gen 2, and I want to access this. So I'm over here in my Azure portal for my storage account. And very specifically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under security and networking to shared access signature. I'm going to get uh, a key specifically for right here, and I'm just going to click generate SAS token, and I'm going to get the SAS token, and I'm going to copy this. Now I'm going to come back over to SQL Server Management Studio, and I'm going to put my shared access signature in place here. Now you want to take the question mark out of this, otherwise it's going to have an error when we connect to the storage. And create that uh, shared access, or that database scope credential. 
And the next thing I need to do is I need to create the external data and source. And Brad, do we create that database scope credential within the master database or within the database that we're working from? I'm creating this in the database that I'm working from. So specifically within the baseball analytics database. Excellent. Thank so you. you can see I'm, I'm actually using all of this right here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say create external data source and I'm calling it bball data source. And I've got my path, ADLS, bball ADLS Gen 2. That's my container. Uh, you shouldn't name the container and the storage account the same thing. One day I'll change this. Uh, DFS core windows.net and then baseball because that's the folder we looked at uh, where I had my data. And I'm referencing the credential that we previously created. The next thing I want to do is I want to look at this data. Now, I could just pull out this using an open row source. I know what these columns are, and there's no column header in these files. So I need to supply these column headers. And as you can see, there's quite a few columns in here. Now, why am I doing this? I'm using open row so, uh, to be able to look at this, make sure I've got my columns correct, and also that I've defined them correctly from a data type standpoint. And I did a top one on this, so I'm pulling back this row of data, but what I'm doing is I'm going down, I've connected successfully to my ADLS Gen 2, I've connected to my folder, to the stats folder inside of my baseball folder, and I've pulled back this information from there. So we are reading right now from our data lake, even though we haven't defined a table within our, um, our managed instance. So let me come back over here, because if I want to make this an external table, I need a couple things more that I need to define. The next thing is an external file format. Now, this is a CSV data type. If it was Parquet, I would define a Parquet data type. And remember, in the documentation, we actually show how to do that. So it's really important that you review that documentation because it covers a lot of things. Now, the other thing I do want to note real quick is there were thousands of files. And so if you look at this, I'm aliasing the name with this asterisk right here. So that way I can get every single file. If I wanted to, I could go back over uh, to Data Explorer. I could get a specific file name and I could read the contents of a specific file. Now, as a quick note, when you do this, you'll want to read the contents of a specific file. So that way you can make sure all the definitions are correct. Everything's coming back correctly. One of the things that you'll end up doing when you do these select stars is you'll see, are there any files where there is an error in the format? All of the files must have the same format. Otherwise, we're going to get an error and that'll be reflected when we try and run our queries. Now, it will typically give you a specific file name that you have an error with. So you can always pull that file out and look at what went wrong there. So that's an important thing to keep in mind for troubleshooting. That's a great hack, folks. That's a great thing to remember. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create this external file format. And then I'm creating this statement and it's create external table, DBO baseball stats. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up baseball analytics. Um, you can see external resources. I can see the data source that we've created. I can see the file format that we've created. When I open up tables though, right now I don't have an external table, but that's going to change shortly. So I'm going to grab all this. And I'm using the same columns I previously used in my select statement to make sure that I've got them correctly. And I'm using the data types that I've previously selected. And now what I'm saying is I'm saying, go to this location, um, use the data source and the file format, go to stats and get everything from that CSV folder. I run this. And if I come back over here and I refresh, now I have my external table. Now, the important thing to keep in mind is this is a virtualized table. I, this is just a schema sitting here. I don't actually have any data in my managed instance. As a matter of fact, I would pick up new data as I drop files into my ADLS to be able to get. So it's a wonderful way for me to be able to just drop data and be able to use the power of my managed instance to be able to get that data, transform it however I want to, or to be a data source downstream for Fabric that I'm going to utilize. And What's the I'm purpose gonna... of doing this, Brad, if you don't got any data? Huh, huh, huh. No data? Come on, man. What are you doing to me? Uh, no, you're definitely going to have some oh, data, Dan. I, oh, that, no, that's not what I said. No, data. no, you said there was no data. What, that's data. There's data sitting on the ADLS Gen 2. As a matter of fact, there's 12 uh, gigs worth of data. And ooh. we've gone through and we've scanned all that data. And I just released, uh, returned 10 rows. Now, this came oh. back 
unbelievably quickly. And again, I think I've got an eight core managed instance sitting here. So this just shows the power that we have to be able to go against that storage and pull that out very, very quickly so we can get to it. But it's if true. you're looking to create an external table, a virtualized table within managed instance, now you know how. How many rows did you say? Holy mackerel, that's amazing. Is that, now there's no commas there. Is that 12 billion or 12 million? No, I, I want to say, Dan, that is 12 million, uh, 20,672 rows of data that we just returned very quickly on our managed instance. And as you saw, when I wanted to perform a subset of those rows, I could do that. All that data is sitting down in our data lake. If I want to create a stored procedure to be able to do any transformations against this, I could absolutely do this right now. Uh, but as I showed within the Copilot video, this is now a source that I can use to be able to take my data pipeline and pull that data directly from ADLS into managed instance. So what did we cover? Well, we covered a lot, right? We covered how we create a database scope credential uh, using a SAS token. And we talked about the difference between the SAS token and the managed identity. Largely, I was using the SAS token because I didn't set up uh, my storage correctly where it was using an Azure Active Directory directory or an intra ID security group. So I needed that SAS token so I could access all of my data. Then we looked at our open row set to be able to look at the data, make sure that we had it mapped correctly. We created an external table and we were able to access our data in Azure Data Lake storage uh, from our the power of our relational engine of Azure SQL Manage Instance. And that's how that works. Some really powerful stuff there. Look, you know where we like to keep this going in the comments down below. Did you see something you really like? Did we miss something in the video? Is there something additionally you like to see? We'd love to hear from you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. Be good to each other, y'all. Yeah, that's what I say. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.